There we go. Robot lady said we're recording. Okay. So hello and welcome. My name is Sandy Roberts. I am here today on behalf of the Warren County Library. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see you guys a little better. Um, this is our first event for New Jersey Makers Day, our first kind of live event for New Jersey Makers Day. Please do make sure that you check the Warren County Li uh, Library website because there are lots of fun things going on this weekend. Um, and of course, we were talking about the make and take bags that you can get um, from the library each week. So make sure that you do that because those are really fun projects. Like I know one person already did the bird feeder. Um, and we're going to be making our little light up known card today. This is a fun electronics project. I don't know if you can see his little cheeks lit up too well. Let's see, put them up here. Can you see them lighting up a little bit? There we go. A little light up cheeks. So this is a fun circuits project. Now, for some of our younger folks, it might be a little frustrating. Don't worry. Okay, if you don't get it on the first try, you can keep trying. And I do have some backup plans to make it easier if you need to, okay? We're here to learn and have some fun. Um, so let's go over some of the ground rules real quick. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask that if we're talking, we try to keep it to one person talking at a time. So if I'm trying to share some information, um, let's not have lots of people talking at the same time because that can get really confusing, right? Um, if you do need to get my attention, there are some really easy ways to do it. Who knows some ways to get my attention if you need to ask a question? Tristan. You can, yeah. Oh, there you go. It's off. Uh the way is to raise your hand like this That's so, a great so, so you can get your attention. Right. So you can put your yeah. hand right up there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how you get people's attention. That does. That's, that's what I do in school. Good job. Now, if I don't see that when I'm building the card, sometimes it's hard for me to see my computer. You are welcome to unmute just like Kristen did and say, hey, Sandy, I have a question. Okay, so I don't want you to feel like you can't ask questions as we go, okay? Um, all I ask is that we not have lots of people talking all at once, because I don't know about you, but that just, that just gets very hard for me to hear, okay? Um, I'm gonna ask that we be nice and safe today. As I was pointing out, we have some materials that came in your bag. We have our little gnome uh, template that you should be coloring now. We have two little lights, they're called LEDs. Okay, and I'll be talking more about them in a little bit. We have a little battery. We wanna keep that away from babies and pets because if they swallow it, it can be dangerous. So we wanna be careful with that. And then we have this conductive tape. It's called maker's tape. And it's basically uh, a sticky tape. The back comes off, this white stuff comes off and you can tape it down just like invisible tape, but it's got silver woven in it. So it conducts electricity. It's pretty special stuff. You're also going to want a pair of scissors. You're going to want some markers or crayons or whatever you want to color your um, creation with, your little gnome with. And then you might want some invisible tape as well. Now, I'm going to show you some fun hacks at the end, okay, that you can use to make more cards yourself, but we'll get to that. Okay, awesome. Let's see, what else is important? Um, I'm going to ask that you, if you want to go ahead on your own, if you want to go faster, you'll notice I have all the instructions written inside the card, okay? So you can follow those along, but if you jump ahead and we're still further behind, I'm going to ask that you not interrupt the group with questions about stuff that we haven't gotten to yet, because that can really, really confuse folks that are like doing this for the first time. So if you choose to move ahead on your own pace, you absolutely can do that. It's just, I'm gonna ask you to um, maybe hold on your questions until we catch up to you, okay? And if you fall behind or get confused, you do have those instructions and I'll stay on a little afterwards if we need to, to catch anybody up, if you miss a step or whatever, but feel free to ask as we're going through if you're not sure what's happening. And like I said, I'll have some backups. So if this is too complicated, if this circuit seems like too much to you, don't worry, we've got backup plans so you can still make your gnome light up. And if all else fails, he's pretty cute, just as he is, right? He's kind of cute, I think he's cute. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that if you kind of are doing your own thing and you're more of a self-paced person, that's okay. Um, I will say some of our younger folks may need adult help with steps during here, during this. If you start feeling frustrated, ask your adult. That's what they're there for, right? They're there to help. Um, 
this isn't too complicated a project if you listen carefully and follow along with what we're doing, okay? And like I said, you've got the instructions. Um, just a note for those that joined us a little late, we are recording, so I just want you to be aware of that. Um, all right, so we're gonna start off while you are coloring. I just wanna go over a little bit about how this project works, some of the science behind it, because I am a science teacher and I love science. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background. We are gonna be making a circuit. Does anyone know what a circuit is? Tristan, go ahead. What is a circuit? A circuit is something that that is charged by batteries. Oh, it's powered by batteries. It allows the electricity, the power from the battery to flow. All kinds of different things. Very good. Yay. We use circuits all the time. Okay. All of our house is powered by circuits. My computer is powered by a circuit. My lights here are powered by a circuit. It's all powered by circuits. Okay. And all that circuits do is allow the power, the electricity to flow through a material and turn on our lights and all these different things, okay? Who can think of a shape that sounds very similar to the word circuit? Can you think of a shape that sounds like circuit? Tristan? Go ahead and guess. It's not school, I'm not, I'm not grading you. <laughs> what do you well, that's, a, that's a good guess, that's a good guess. Anybody else got one that sounds like circuit? What shape sounds like? Yeah, go for it. What is it, Tristan? Ah, circle. Circle. And that's because a circuit needs to be closed at all times. That loop has to be closed. That circle has to be closed. If you break it, it's just like if you're wearing a necklace, right? Or a bracelet. If it breaks, it'll fall off. It doesn't work. Circuits are the same way. They need to be closed all the way around so the electricity can flow through the circuit. So I'm gonna to switch to my other camera and we're gonna talk a little bit more. You guys are welcome to color while we're chatting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, but I just wanna kind of make sure that we all are on the same page here so we all understand how this works. Where's my marker? I should grab a marker. Okay, can you see my paper? Yes. I'm gonna put on my glasses. I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> all right. So in a very simple circuit, we need three things. Every circuit needs at least three things and kind of a fourth, very useful optional thing, okay? So first we have our power source. Today, that's gonna to be our little battery, okay? Every power source in electricity has um, a voltage and that's basically how much um, electricity is gonna flow through our wires, okay? You always wanna match the voltage of your power source to the voltage of the thing that you're trying to light up or trying to make work. In this case, these little LEDs. So we're always gonna have a battery and I'm just gonna draw our little circle as our battery today. I'm not gonna use for those dads or moms out there that know circuit diagrams, I'm not using uh, <laughs> traditional circuit diagram materials today. So we'll just roll with it. So we've got our battery, okay? And batteries have a positive and a negative side. So if you look at your battery, Look at it really closely. Let me zoom in here so we can see. Our battery has a smooth side with a little plus sign on it, okay? Has that little plus sign? That's the positive side. And on the other side, it has nothing, it's just rough. That's negative. So it works a little bit like a magnet. It has a positive and a negative side. And it's really important because electricity has to flow in one direction. It's kind of like, if you're on the highway, you have to go in the direction everybody else is going, right? If you start going in the opposite direction on a road, that's gonna be very dangerous. Electricity has to flow in a single direction. So our electricity is gonna flow out from our battery and it's gonna come over to our load. And load is just a science term for whatever you wanna power with the electricity. So we've got our power over here in the form of our battery. And we have our load. And that can be a speaker or a computer or a phone or a microwave or a coffee machine, or in this case, our LED, light emitting diode. Okay, that's really fancy. <laughs> All that means is that this will light up when we run power through it, okay? So I want you all to take a second, grab your LED. I'm gonna zoom in on it. Grab your LED, grab your battery. 
Okay. Remember how I said the battery has a positive and a negative, a plus and a minus? Well, your LED does as well. The long leg, see the long side? That's positive. And the shorter one is negative. We have to make sure that we put the power through our LEDs the right direction. If we don't, it won't light up. So I've got my battery. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Oh, I zoomed in instead of out. That was silly. So if I take my battery and I turn it on its side like that, and I slide the long leg of the LED onto the positive side and the short leg onto the negative side, what happens? It lights up. I see a bunch of them lighting up. Awesome. Yay. All right. We have made our first circuit. Believe it or not, that's a circuit. <gasps> Ta-da! So if you wanted to, you could just tape this in place, stick it behind, you know, the nose of your gnome and be done. Yes, question sharp. Mine got dried up. What got dried up? This got, got to light up. Oh, it light up. Oh, yeah. Tristan, what's up? Circuit do. Ask her. Um, what does a circuit do? A circuit just exists to take electricity from our power source to our load, like our LED, and back again. That's all circuits do. They're very simple. They're literally just electric circles. Pretty cool, right? They seem like they should be complicated. All right. So we have our little LED, our load. And now we know that we have to pay attention to positive and negative with our little, our little bulb here, right? And our long leg is our positive and our short leg is our negative. And now you guys all know that. So we've got our load, our little LED that's gonna light up when we make it all work, yay. Now we could just have this come all the way back around to our battery, but we're gonna put in something special. When you walk into a dark room, what's the first thing that you try to do? What do you look for or feel for? Because it's dark. Yes, Emily and Abby? Go ahead. What do you turn do? on the lights. You turn on the lights. You flip the switch, right? Well, that's exactly it. We're going to put a switch in so that we can turn our lights on and off. And a switch, all it does is works to break our circuit on purpose temporarily. So a switch opens that circle so the electricity can't flow. So we're going to go ahead and put a little switch in. Ours is just going to be, oh. <laughs> like I said, I've, I've been rough on my card. So here's my battery. When this part of our circuit touches the battery, that's what closes our circuit and, turn, and it works as a switch. If I let go, oh no, I just threw my pen across the, oh goodness, I threw my pen across the room. Goodness, goodness. So you see how if I don't hold it, if I don't close that switch, nothing happens. But when I close the switch, it lights up. Open, nothing works, close the switch, and it lights up. So we're gonna add a switch to our circuit today. That way we can turn it on and off and not drain our battery. And then it comes back around here, okay? So you can see, circle. Now, you'll notice I gave you two LEDs, right? Not just one. So we could just stick another LED in here, right? I'm a bad artist, so I hope that's okay. But the problem is, the, remember I said this was only three volts? Now, imagine that you have two liters of soda and you have friends coming over. When you run out of soda, you run out of soda, right? You don't have more soda. You can only fill so many cups with your soda. Kind of works the same way with batteries. They can only fill, they can only power so many LEDs. This battery is three volts. This LED needs three volts. So if the three volts goes to this LED, I just filled that cup, but I have no more soda. So this one's not gonna light up. And in fact, the way that this circuit works, if this one doesn't get any power, it's gonna act like a switch and it's gonna break the whole circuit. So we can't just put them so that they leapfrog one from another. If I had six volts, right? If I had six, I could do three plus three and I could light them both, but I don't have six volts. I only have three volts. My battery only does three, but there's a way around this. This is a series circuit. It's the simplest circuit, but we're smart people. We're gonna do a parallel 
circuit, which is what you see here in what we made. Instead, we kind of set these up. I'm going to draw them kind of on the side, our little LEDs. And we are going to create a little ladder. Okay. That way, our battery, okay, is going to come around that way and it's gonna come around this way. And now three volts goes in here, three volts goes in there. It's like being able to take one bottle of soda and just keep on filling cups forever. Pretty cool, okay? So we're gonna set up what's called a parallel circuit today. Now, you don't need to worry too much about this. I just wanted to show you so that someday down the road, when you're in like eighth grade and somebody starts talking about this stuff, you're gonna be like, wait a second. I remember something about this. When I use a parallel circuit, that battery can power lots of LEDs instead of just one. And that's a good thing. Yes, Tristan, what's up? I have a question. Sure, I hope I have an answer. Not the other direction. Mine lighted up even though, even though there's two on it. Yes, I will be honest. The LEDs I chose use a little less than three volts each. And these batteries are super fresh. So they're putting out a little over three volts each. So sometimes you can get two to light up. But it won't last long that way. It'll drain really quickly that way. Well, mine okay. lasts a while. Well, I'll tell you what. You can probably get a year out of this battery if you make the parallel circuit that we're gonna do. Whereas you might get maybe two weeks out of the battery otherwise. But yes, you're right. You can definitely put both of them on. Um, because, and it, that's because red LEDs actually use a little less than three volts. Um, some colors use different amounts of energy. Red is one of the lowest. Things like white and blue and green use more. So that's another reason I chose a red so that we could. If you wanted to, you could, Again, tape your, um, if you didn't want, if you don't want to do the circuit or if you get frustrated doing the circuit, you can tape your LEDs this way and just tape it, be, you know, right like that. Oh, I can't show you. You could just tape it all together just like that and not even use a conductive tape if you don't want to. The thing is you won't have a switch to turn it on and off if you do it this way, okay? But if you get frustrated, remember, just put them on like little antenna and tape it down to your, your card and you'll still have a nice light up, okay? But that's up to you. So let's go ahead and remember, there's always a backup plan in making, right? Always a backup plan. All right. Now, as I said, you have the directions, but I'm gonna go through this with you. Do I have any questions before we get started on our circuit? We can always come back and finish coloring our gnomes a little later, okay? I'm trying to make sure I get in the right position so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. All right, we can always come back and color our gnome some more later. Um, but for now, I wanna get started on our circuit because we're at almost five o'clock. Now I'm gonna start by actually folding this in half right now so that I don't have to worry about doing it after I add all the electronics, it's harder to do then. So carefully line it up and just, just so you can see what I'm doing, just line it up carefully and crease it like that. I find it's just a little easier to do this now if you do it later, it's not a big deal. No big deal. All right, and then I'm gonna just flatten it out again. Okay, here we go. The first thing we wanna do is take our LEDs and we wanna put them in position. So again, we wanna pay attention. Which one's the long, right? The long leg is our positive. Our positive legs are gonna to go towards the bottom of the card. You see that little plus sign? Okay, so we're gonna just gently, gently, Pull the LEDs flat like this, kind of like it's doing a split. Remember, pay attention to which side was the positive and which side was the negative. And then I'm just gonna take that and I'm gonna lay it on my paper. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. Again, making sure I know which one is my positive because that's gonna go to the bottom of the page. Now, if you get these reversed accidentally, don't worry, it's easy to fix later. So we just gently, gently, Spread those legs out. And I'm gonna actually put it like this, okay? You just wanna be gentle because these little legs can break off if you're not careful. Now, if you are maybe an older maker, 
You can bend these into like a little loop. Like I call them bunny ears, kind of like that. The reason that sometimes we like to do this is it makes a stronger connection with the tape, but you don't have to do that. Okay, so you're gonna lay your LEDs down like that. Now we've got our LEDs nicely prepared. How are we doing with that? Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna get our tape out and I'm gonna ask you to carefully measure. Okay, if we need to move our LEDs, we can. You're going to measure from this part all the way across to this corner. And you wanna be pretty careful. You don't wanna to use too much tape because you only have so much. So you're gonna measure from one end. You can see I'm measuring from one end of my top stripe to the other. And I'm just gonna grab myself some scissors. I'm just gonna give it a little snip. Snip. Now I've got my first piece of tape ready to lay down. So this is a good math activity, practicing those measuring skills. If you're someone that likes to get out a ruler, you can get out a ruler and make it perfect. That is up to you. Now, with our LEDs in place, we need to put down the tape so that it covers the legs of the LEDs. It's gonna go over the top of the legs of our LEDs. To use our tape, you're going to pull the gray fabric off of the white backing. Can you see that? Can you see how that works? Make sure it's focused. Oh, there we go. So I'm pulling the gray tape away from the white backing. And you want to do this kind of carefully because you don't want it to all stick to itself. And then I'm going to carefully lay down my tape, making sure it goes over the leads over the legs of my LEDs and all the way down. I'm just doing it as neatly as I can. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's pretty forgiving. And then I'm just using my fingernails or you could use like um, a pencil or a marker. I'm just getting in there and really pressing the tape down nicely against my little, also all my metal touches. The better the metal touches, the better the tape touches the metal of the LEDs, um, the stronger your circuit's going to be. Okay. So that's your first piece. Yes, Sharji. I just kind of like calling you that now. What's up? So right now I'm on the tape part, but I don't know if we need to cut it first or do we need to put it on first? You want to, you want to cut it so that it's exactly this length and then stick it down. So we're going to cut a couple different pieces. Okay. And then we're going to do, once you have that down, the next piece we're going to do is here to the battery. One piece of our tape is gonna go under our battery, okay? And the other is going to go on top when we complete the switch, okay? So we're gonna be sticking our battery on top of this piece of tape. So that's why you can see that it runs into the space of the battery. So again, just like before, we're gonna measure, but we wanna make sure that this piece of tape goes over this piece of tape so that they're connected. They have to go over, okay? They need to go over. So you wanna make sure it's long enough that it overlaps right here. See how that's overlapping? I'm going longer and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it down. Okay, making sure again, I overlap it here and I wanna press it really good. All right, how are we doing? We should have two pieces down. And I see parents getting involved to help out. Thank you, I appreciate it. I wish I could be in person with all of you and help you myself with my own two hands. Soon, 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 we'll be able to see each other together in the makerspace or in the uh, library. But until then, we will muddle through. Okay, so we're gonna be placing our battery onto our card. And remember I said that there's the positive side of the battery and the negative side? the rough negative side is gonna go down, okay? Now there are a lot of ways you could do this. You could put a little scotch tape on the side, but what I like to do is I take a tiny, a little piece of my maker's tape, maybe an inch long, you know, about the length of the battery itself. And parents, old school, you probably remember this from uh, your days of hanging posters as a teenager. I'm gonna, fold it 
So the sticky side, I mean, uh, zoom here so you can see what I did. I made a little loop of the tape with the sticky side out. Okay, little loop of the tape with the sticky side out. And I'm gonna use that to stick my battery to my circuit. So I stick the little piece of sticky tape that with the sticky side out. Oh, and I just realized I moved off screen, sorry. This one's a tough one to make sure you guys can see clearly. So I just put it here in the center of the circle on top, made sure it had good connection with the conductive tape. And then when I put my battery on, it sticks to the sticky side of the tape. Okay. And if you want to reinforce that, you know, make sure it doesn't move on you. You take a little bit of regular uh, in, uh, invisible tape and you can just put it on the side. But here's the thing. You wanna leave some of that metal exposed so that we can make our switch. So you don't wanna cover the whole thing, just a little bit. Yes, Sharji. What's up? So do we actually, I'm a little bit confused that at the little tiny line after the big line of the little string, I don't know if we need to cut it or do, or like which part's the sticky part? I don't know if we need to like put the part upside down. Okay, so did you, you did this part here, the long part here and the short part here? Well, I'm on the short part right now. Okay, then you're gonna take a little piece of your maker's tape about the length of your battery and cut it. And you're gonna turn it inside out. So the sticky side is out and make a little loop. Let me see if I can show you from this card. So you're gonna make a little loop. Can you see that? Okay, a little loop. One second, Tristan. And it's gonna be sticky on the outside. And that's what you're gonna to use to hold your battery on. Okay, Tristan, what's your question? How can the tape reject the battery's pointings to the other, to the other two lids? Well, when we fold it over, the other part of the circuit will touch the top of the battery. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. And the nice thing about this tape is that it's it's got like a special glue on it that conducts electricity. So there's all of this tape conducts electricity. So we can use it kind of like glue if we need to, which is what we're doing here. We're kind of using it like a, a way to just stick the battery on. Okay. So we should have this piece of tape and this piece of tape and our battery stuck on top. And like I said, if you're having trouble making that little loop, you can just use some invisible tape over it to hold it in place, okay? You just don't wanna cover the whole battery with invisible tape, because then it won't make a connection for our switch. Now, we gotta move on to our second part of our circuit. Yes, Jackson. How does like the battery get to the lights? That's well, when we fold it, see, we're going to put the tape here. And when we fold it, this part of the circuit is going to touch the top of the battery and close the circuit and turn the switch on. Okay. Because we're making a switch. We're closing the circuit in a weird way. Now you could just, if you wanted to, this is another thing you could do. If you're feeling a little frustrated right now, you could take a piece of tape, go from here to here and cross over. So like, if you wanted to, you could take a piece of tape and do this. You see, oh, let me move this up a little bit so you can see. You could take a piece of tape and do this right now if you want it. And that would also complete the circuit. You just wouldn't have a switch and that's okay. It would just always be on. So if you are feeling frustrated, you could just do a piece of tape just like that, stick it down over the LEDs and on top of the battery and you would have a closed circuit. Okay, that's another way that you could do this. You just don't have a switch that way. And that's okay. That's okay. Not every, a circuit is not required to have a switch. Some circuits are always on. I'm gonna make mine with a switch though. So I'm gonna measure a little piece for this and I'm gonna attach it. Now we could, by the way, fold all of this if we wanted to. But I thought that maybe today that might be a little much to do for the first time. So we're just gonna do this kind of cut and paste way. And I will demonstrate for anybody that might be curious about the folding. 
So you see, I just did another piece there. Now I'm going to cut a piece here. Now you might be wondering, why is this an L here, Sandy? Why is that? Well, if I went straight across here, this piece here, if I went here, would touch here, over here, and it would short my circuit. What that means is that your circuit completes without going through all the pieces. And if it does that, like it wouldn't be going through the battery and it wouldn't light up. Okay. So I had to make this little L to avoid the battery and stuff over here. This is all part of design when we do this. And usually we kind of play. This is one I've done before. So I made a nice little template for us. Okay, I'm just gonna keep on laying down tape. I'm gonna make sure. Now you see how that one, I wasn't careful. I didn't see if you could see. I didn't perfectly overlap it. See how it's a little bit under? That's okay. That's not the end of the world. Okay, that's not gonna, not gonna cause a big trouble as long as it's at least touching some. All right, last piece. I'm gonna, you know, if you have extra, this is where you wanna put it. Um, to make the, as good a switch as we can get. Okay, here we go. Now, if I did everything right, and even if I did everything right, sometimes paper circuits can be funky. I should be able to fold this over. And now this part that I just put in, whoop, sorry, this part, should touch the battery. And when it touches the battery, it closes the circuit, turns on the switch and everything will light up. What's up, Shark? There we go. What's up? I thought there was a question. Now you see how mine's kind of, yeah. Um, do we need to put the clear tape over the battery? That's optional. You don't have to, okay? That's something that if you wanna make sure it holds on really carefully, you can, but you wanna be careful not to cover the whole battery. Go on, Jackson, what's up? It's a little hard to like, get the, the stuff off the tape. It is. Try making sure you pull the gray part away from the back. It's easier to pull the gray off of the white than to try to pull the white off of the gray because the gray is so much thinner. Okay? So always try to pull the gray away from the white. Like that. Okay? Longer piece would be better? Now, if you run out of tape or you need extra aluminum foil and a glue stick, okay? You can use aluminum foil and a glue stick instead. Now, mine worked, but you notice that my, my LEDs were being a little wiggly. This is another good place to get some invisible tape and just put it over your LEDs to make sure that they stay stuck down really nicely. And I just really get in there and push them down. And that really can help your LEDs to light up nicely. They, paper circuits often take a little bit of um, finesse and a little bit of care to get them to light up just the way you want. That's normal. Like you can see, even mine is being a little wonky today. <laughs> Come on. Oh my goodness. Mr. Gnome. Get a good connection. There we go. Um, so you kind of want to just play with it until you get everything touching really well. Now, if there are any gaps, you're going to want to fill them in. If your LEDs, these LEDs, I, I will be honest, I'm not thrilled with them. I ordered them in bulk and they are not, not the best LEDs I've used. So, but sometimes right now with supply chain issues, parents know you go with what you can get your hands on. So that's kind of where we are. What's up, Char? Um, somehow mine is not lighting up. Okay, so there are a couple of things that could be happening. Just like mine, maybe you have a little wiggle going on in there and you might need to hold it. Like, see how I'm holding it? So everything's in good contact. Try that. Okay. Also, check all of your joints, the places where the tape is supposed to overlap and make sure that it is overlapping, that it's not just sitting next to each other. Like, like you don't want your tape to be coming like this, that gap will break your circuit. You wanna make sure that they overlap all the way, okay? You want that, because that break will break your circuit. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing you can check is that if your 
LEDs really aren't lighting up, you may have accidentally turned them around. It has to be the long positive side on the bottom and the short negative side on the top. What's up, Jackson? Jackson, did you have a question? I got I got the whole thing to work. Good job. Show us your working. Uh... Can you push on the, on the nice. Oh, good job. Woohoo! Yay! You did a better job than I did. Good job, Tristan. What's up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Very good. Are they not working at all? Okay. So, like I said. Check all the joints, make sure that they're overlapping. Make sure that these connections are really strong. Really get your fingernails in there and push them down or use some tape to tape them down, okay? Make sure that this piece is long enough that this is touching your battery, okay? If it's not long enough to touch your battery, you're not gonna get your, your uh, circuit light up. Okay, so that's another thing that can happen. Make sure that that's touching. Um, and then the other thing is you can see like mine for whatever reason is being a little wiggly. I have to kind of hold it in place. So what I would do with this is I would just tape it closed when I was all done. So everything stays where I want it. And sometimes like if I let go, it doesn't stay so well. And that happens sometimes with paper circuits. We're just making this on paper. If we were using something stronger, it would be a little easier like cardboard. That's one thing I do sometimes too, is I'll put like a cereal box cardboard on the back and that makes it more sturdy. Okay, so keep playing with it until you get it. The other thing that does often happen is that this battery, if it's not positive side facing up, the smooth, shiny plus side facing up, your your uh, it's not going to work. And if you don't make sure that your long legs are down, your positive legs are down, you got it. See, you just need to work at it. I'm proud of you. You worked through that. Good job, Tristan. Good job. You guys are amazing. Good makers, persistence, I like it. All right, I'm gonna show you a quick hack before we're out of time. If you wanna be able to do this at home and can't get the LEDs. All right, you know what this is? Who knows what this is? What is it? Nobody? This is a little electric tea light. They sell them at the dollar store, two for a pack. And when you turn it on, see it kind of lights up. These things have everything you need, almost everything you need for a paper circuit. So I'm gonna show you what you can do. If you get a little screwdriver, see how it's got a little screw here? You're gonna undo that screw, righty tighty lefty loosey. So we're gonna turn it left, okay? And take that little screw out. You can save that for something else. Then you could take this battery comp compartment open, right? And take out the battery. What does that look like? That's the same battery we were just using, right? Boom, you got a battery, you got a power source for your circuit. Okay, now we can keep hacking this. And this is fun to do. I never get bored hacking things. This is a good hack. I'm just gonna use my little screwdriver here, lift this up, okay? And what's that? What is that? That's an LED. All right, now. You never know how these things are gonna be attached. You're gonna to have to sometimes be gentle, but look at that one came out really easily. And then you just straighten out the legs a little bit. Now, technically speaking, okay, technically speaking, this should be positive because it's longer and this should be negative. But sometimes they cut them when they put them in these things. So you can't really be sure, you're gonna to have to test it. Look, it didn't work. I had to switch it, okay? So if I switch it around, then it works. So you have to test it. But now you've got an LED, you've got a battery, and you probably have aluminum foil around your house and a glue stick. So you can use aluminum foil as your tape, the LED, and your battery, and you can design your own light up circuits. Okay? So that's a quick, easy hack. The other thing that you can do is check out a website. I'm going to switch my camera and answer questions and slide back over here. You can also check out a website called Scrappy Circuits if you like making your own circuits. Um, let's see, where is, I'm gonna put the, oh, you taking off, bye Tristan. It's not class, if you guys wanna go to dinner and, and get and get your weekend started, that's okay. Oh, we're gonna do it out on the goose things. 
Oh yeah, dude. Yes, I was gonna mention that. <laughs> Yay! That's also mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Um. So yeah, if you haven't checked it out, you can register still for our um scavenger hunt, our paper engineering scavenger hunt. So you can do all kinds of paper engineering. <laughs> Hi, Jackson. Who's your sister? What's her name? Oh, I can't hear you. Okay. Adley. Adley. Okay. Hi, Adley. But go and sign up because we're going to do paper engineering projects all weekend and you can earn points and um, compete for your team. So really all you need is paper, tape, and scissors and you can do those challenges. So if you go to Warren Lib, sign up for our um, paper engineering challenge this weekend. It's really fun. My family will be doing it too. I've, I put 10 paper challenges. Some of them are worth up to 500 points. And we're going to share out your creations onto Facebook and um, Instagram. So you'll get to share with the whole world what you built. Okay. Any questions about your circuits? How are we doing? Remember, if it's not working, you can do the hacks I showed you and just stick the battery on, right? And just tape it. If your circuit isn't working, there's always a backup plan. Always a backup plan. And that's okay. Because the whole goal here was to learn how circuits work and make something cool. 